Hello YouTube, PPC's Matt here, and today I want to show you guys some Singularity Computer's Ethereal Reservoir Mounts. So as you can see here, we have the single reservoir mounts here, the duals, as well as the core reservoir mount. Um, each of them are a little bit different in the way, like these two obviously hold just one reservoir, pump reservoir combination, whereas the dual will obviously hold two. Um, and it depends on the length of your pump reservoir or reservoir uh, for how many you'll need. The core is actually pretty good at holding most any length um, reservoir pump res combo just with the single one. You could use multiple though if you know you have like a 400 millimeter reservoir or something crazy like that. Um, the singles typically need two, usually if you have something more than like a 100 millimeter reservoir tube and especially with a pump at the bottom, you're probably going to want two of these. Um, and same goes for the duals. Uh, they are very sturdy themselves, even just one on its own will actually hold your pump and res very securely. And if like you're doing hardline or something, it's only going to get more sturdy the more stuff you connect up to it. So you can actually get away with one in some situations. But other than that, you can clearly see that they're nice for directly mounting your reservoir or pump reservoir to your radiator. Um, you can do them both with fans or without. Here we have the singles without any fans on them. But if you were to mount them to fans, you'll see in the video that I have of installing them um, being mounted on fans. But you'll want to use some M4. Well, in the case of this radiator, it needs M4 screws. So I'm using M4 screws, but they are 35 millimeters long. That would be for the fans and the reservoir mount. And then that, you know, that's compared to your traditional 30 millimeter, uh, just radiator fan screw. The ones that I'm using right there are just the ones that come with Hardware Labs rads. These are actually just five millimeters and you could get them a little bit longer, but the five millimeters actually hold it plenty fine just directly to the radiator. But just keep that in mind when you're, you know, piecing up everything together, uh, that you might need some different size bolts than you normally have. Um, you can find a lot of those at like your local hardware store. We also sell them. I can link them below. But um, just make sure you have those on hand because you're always going to have a hard time mounting everything. The rest of these are actually put together with M4 screws as well. Um, some assembly is required. They'll come in the package, um, mostly disassembled like this. So you just take the M4 screws out and you put the back plate on. Um, the core, actually, you assemble most of this, but I will go over that all in the time lapse I have of how to um, put these together as well as install them on your radiator or fans. Um, but that's not to mention, or we can't forget to mention that uh, there's also 140 millimeter back plates available, which will also be linked in the description below. Um, that's, you know, for if you have a 140 millimeter based radiator or fan or wherever you plan on mounting it, um, you can get those uh, separate from the actual mount. They all come with 120s. But then you just bolt those straight on just like this, and then you can use it on 140 millimeter based um, components. These can also obviously be just mounted directly to like a panel in your case. If you actually desired, it still makes it easy for that. So there's just kind of endless opportunities with these reservoir mounts. Um, you guys honestly should just try them out yourselves. They are worth every penny in my opinion, and I have not used a reservoir mount that makes it any easier than these or holds them any more secure. Most of the time I end up just modding my own, but these kind of eliminate the need for that and really make the whole process of a build a lot easier. So upcoming later this week, um, I'm gonna have a short video on how to change out some O-rings on a 1080 block. Uh, the reason being is because my 1080 block actually had an O-ring break. So I was down for a week, which is why you haven't seen any videos all last week. Um, so I'm going to have a video covering that as well as the finish of my build. So stay tuned for all those. I think you guys should find most of that interesting. And you can always keep in touch with us on Facebook as well as like Twitter and our Instagram. Follow all those things and stay tuned for everything coming up, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, dislike it and let me know why. Other than that, though, please subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.